and I think it was because Jeff posted one video from like my combat handgun solutions class, and he like made sure he put on there, don't worry everyone, the weapons were like triple cleared, and I commented, I was, I was like, I was like, fuck it, tell them that we were going live the whole time. And so, <laughs> so I was thinking about like, because I carry a 22 mag revolver like a decent amount, and I was thinking about, I was like, what if we just set up training where we're wearing like you know, 1970s flak jackets, but we just only use 22s. <laughs> you know, so like <laughs> that. Uh, is really <laughs> Exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, so um, does anybody have major questions over kind of the basics of the open guard, the technical stand up? Because we're going to kind of work down now into a little bit of like entangled guard work. And obviously, all of this is a uh, is a continuum, right? So if we start entangled, but I'm able to open, kick him back a little bit, now I'm back into open. So like, you know, all of those things are just, you know, it's just part of, you know, kind of continuum. So we got any major questions over, um, over that stuff? Uh, I just want to be clear, open guard is like when we're laying, laying Yeah, on yeah, back. so that's where you were on the back and you had your feet and your hand frames up in front of you and you're kind of keeping distance. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and so, uh, yeah, so like jujitsu wise, grappling wise, like for us, like open guard is basically any time that I don't have some part of my body wrapped around some part of his body, basically, I guess. Got it. Okay. Anything else, guys? Okay, so now we're going to kind of work down into a little bit of uh, entangled guard basics. So I'll borrow Aaron here just because I've done jujitsu with him and he's the least likely to crush me in here. So, um, so a couple things. Um, so, as we're like, you know, we're, we're here, we're trying to make space or whatever, but let's say Aaron bypasses. He does, he does classic Toriando, like, so this is like almost two jujitsu. So yeah, so he does what like most guys are gonna do, right? They're just gonna throw your legs past, come in, which, I mean, it, it works, right? So as we're trying to set up our entangled guard, so I didn't, I didn't actually mean to set this up as like a basic side control escape, which is fine, right, boom. But I come in and I start to set up my entangled guards. A couple things that I want is that one, the hands are what hurts you, right? So I have to get control of the arms somehow. And typically I want either plenty of space or no space. What I don't want is to be stuck in what I call like the gray zone, where he's both close enough to strike me and grab me and all those things, but he's also like back far enough that when I sit up to try to grab him or wrestle him, he can avoid space, right? So I get to here and here. So as I'm getting my control, of the guy's arms and hands. There's a few different things. So we're gonna start with basic closed guard, because that's kind of our basic, especially in the, uh, the fight realm. So my basics of closed guard is gonna be, boom, that I go both of my legs around his torso, right? What we call outside position, okay? Basic closed guard. So now, when it comes to uh, controlling his posture and his arms, so what makes this an okay position defensively is that now he loses the mobility of his legs and like the ability to like strike me with him, right? Now I have to control his posture. If I don't, he just looks up, keeps good posture, and now he starts to rain down punches, you know, or he's like, oh, hey, cool gun. Let me start to grab stuff, right? You know, things like that. So, Lost yeah. your flight. I know, it doesn't quite fit on there. But if I keep it in the holster, it lets me use the holster still. Perfect, right? So, uh, basics of closed guard. So when I get to here and here, if he's got his posture, I have to do a big sit up, grab him, bring him on top of me, right? Which is. Guys who like started doing jiu-jitsu, it's always like the worst of like the first days, just doing like a bajillion sit-ups, right? So two main uh, ways that I'm gonna control his posture, all right? So one, the first one is gonna be what we call head and arm control, right? So I'm under one of his arms and I'm over the head and then I'm gonna go grip. I personally like palm to palm grip. I'm gonna keep him down right here, keep him on top of me, okay? So uh, one, this helps control his ability to generate force. However, he can still strike me. One, a little bit there, but he has his right arm free over here, right? So one, he can come with kind of some shots over the top, but he's open to my body on that side, right? You see this a lot in mixed martial arts. There's not a whole lot I can do about that. Like I, I cannot do everything all at the same time. So I get to here and here, go ahead and arm control. I'm gonna clamp down, right? And then I'm going to, if I can, I'm gonna try to walk my guard up higher on his back, okay? So head and arm control is one. The other one, the other basic one is gonna be an overhook and head control. So I sit up, boom, I'm over one arm and I'm grabbing the head right here, okay? So uh, maybe you know, I'll, go, I'll go on this side so you guys can see. So I'm overhooked and then I'm head, right? And if the guy has clothes on or whatever, I'll grab back here and hold with that, okay? Same thing, I get good control of one arm. He still has one arm free, but one, I can't do a whole lot about that, but at the very least, these strikes that I take are not gonna be the kinds that knock me out in one shot more than likely. So I'm just trying to buy myself some time. 
Okay, so we get to here and here. So now kind of then the fight becomes, Aaron is gonna try to wiggle his arm back out and get his posture up. When he gets his posture up, I'm gonna try to get back up and bring his posture back down. Okay? So that how, does, sense. how does that end? Like, how do you win? You just- We're gonna get to that. Oh, now. sorry. I'm trying to not do like a whole bunch of- Okay. Like guard all at once, you know, for guys who sorry, are- Sorry, I'll, I'll stop now. Um, so does that make sense conceptually as far as the basics of closed guard? Postural control. Mm -hmm. Could you just go over that last part one more time of, <clears throat> of working, you're working away from, but then you're also trying to keep them close? Because what, what exactly are you, are you doing? There? Yeah, so in this particular case, so he's going to try to work away from me, right? Yeah. So he does not want to be here, right? Yeah. So he's going to do, yeah, he's going to like frame and push on me and he's going to try to sit back up. So when he tries to sit back up, I'm going to have to pull him and get him back down. Got it. So, so that's, that's the main postural fight, right? And then the fight becomes like, okay, boom. Then what can I do, like from a jiu-jitsu standpoint, to do stuff to him? Yeah. So when you're when you're going, to, like he starts trying to posture up the other way, and you're trying, you want to obviously reclose that distance. You're kind of almost a combination of kind of crunching up to come get in, but you're also pulling in at the same time with your legs. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So it's it's a sit up mode because I obviously have to sit close enough to grab stuff, but then it's definitely a pull him with my legs as well. And that's, that's actually a really good question because that's always one of the big fundamental problems that we have, you know, with new guys or, you know, with white belts in the gym is that they try to grab the guy and just pull him down with their upper body. And you get, so let's say Aaron's got me in closed guard, right? It's funny because our club doesn't do like any closed guard at all. So let's say he reaches up, he grabs head and arm, right? But he doesn't pull his legs. Go ahead, pull me down, bro. Right? That's hard. But now if he just pulls, go ahead and comes up and pulls his knees to his chest, gets me a little bit forward. Okay, now... He got the posture and he got his position tightened down. No, so that's a very good question. Okay, so what I want you guys to do, get a few reps of just this. So we're gonna start in that closed guard position. We're gonna sit up, we're gonna grab head and arm control or some form of control, pull the knees, pull him back down and then work to get either head and arm or get over hook and head on that. We'll just get to that position and we'll go over a couple of basic things we can do from there. <laughs> but no, well, this was, I mean, aside from Jeff being a friend, this was another reason that, like, I invited Jeff is because he presents a physical problem. Like, he's just, he's so dimensionally ridiculous that it's like, hey, what, what do we do here, you know? Like, but then you watch, like, D1 college football guys get drunk and slam cops into their own car. No, and, like, and all that stuff is certainly a problem, you know. So, and then, so this might be something for you to try not to get too far off script, Jared. Mm -hmm. So let's say, so you're overhooked here, mm -hmm. and you're trying to pull the head down, right? And maybe that can't work, maybe he's too big. So maybe now come in front of the face with this arm, yeah. and now push up here, and see if you can't push the face out. Okay. Yeah, and now what I want you to do is try to walk your guard up a little bit higher. Yeah. Boom, and now, now come here and go, bring down. Go over his head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go over his head here. Yeah. Not submission. Oh, yeah, there you go. Hey, freak out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, that was the L. Uh, wait. Oops, sorry. So, for that, so that was the overhook. And then, with underhook? Yep, the head and arm. Yep. And okay. so, when you're here and here, rock your hands like right there. Oh, gosh. Yeah. No. So, hold that. Yeah. And so, that's a good one. That one I feel like is less secure from him pulling out, right. but you get really good purchase. And then if you attack right away off of that, it's not a bad position. And I'll show a couple basic things we can do from there here in a second. Okay. How's this work, guys? Yeah, I just like totally, totally new to this. Yeah. Get working somebody else to do. I know. He likes to wrestle. He likes to get himself a wrist lock all the time. That's not true. <laughs> I've never tapped to a wrist lock. I would never tap to a wrist lock. You break it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on over there? <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead and finish up your rep and then uh, come back up. We'll kind of uh, keep you guys, uh, teach you guys a couple of more hands off of that. Yeah, uh, don't go over. Uh, no, I'll give you any resistance to that. I want to know what it felt like. Because you like that. Because you from here, you talk on me, you have a real hand in. I don't know how to go. Yeah. 
Lower jaw down. Okay. Yeah. If you can basically just keep it tight. Yeah. I know this is a lot easier. Um, first we've got a couple over them. So I could and feel it. It, it was like behind. classic. It's a lot easier. White belt. Yeah. yeah. You're just doing yeah, the body. Yeah. I didn't even yeah. feel. Yeah. Now, I tell, now you say that once you start giving me the plank. Conceptually, I, start, I started with the legs. I only felt resistance yeah. in your upper body. I started with the legs, but then when you start to resist, I'm on all other bodies. Well, that's like the hardest thing I feel like for you is using both your arms and legs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's hard for everyone. Well, what's funny is because it's like, even once you like know that stuff, then when you go with someone who is like of a substantially different skill level, then like you're basically as worthless. Yeah. Even though you technically know how to do those things, you know? So, like, <laughs> I kind of have to because I'm smaller than like. <laughs> okay, guys. So, um, I'll kind of show you guys a couple things to progress off of that. So there's a couple of main things that I want to do. Um, so one is if I could use the closed guard to protect myself long enough to get frames back in and then create distance again, that's definitely, you know, a very normal, like reasonable option. So let's say I've got Aaron here again, right? So I ended up in this closed guard position and like started trying to get my controls here, whatever it was, Aaron's trying to posture up or he's starting to do stuff and I can go boom and I can get back to my frame position. So one, we call this a knee shield where I get it in front of him, right? But so I get to here and here, right? I can start to, you know, make my space do that again. So if he gives me a little bit of a space <laughs> look, I'll get my frames back in front, push him, drive him further away, kick him, kick him, kick him, whatever it happens to be. And then I may have to go to tools or I can stand back up. So again, you know, kind of basics of that. So we're like, boom, boom, like, okay. So I managed to get here and here. I'm like, okay, push this back in front, make space, right? Get my frames back in front of him. Boom, boom, stand back up. So that's a very like reasonable one. Um, obviously kind of dependent on like the level of danger and control the guy's exerting over me from that position. Um, an additional thing that we add to the closed guard is once I get the upper body control, then I need to do one of two things to help keep his posture down, but to also keep him from just being able to pick me up and slam me, right? So if I'm here in basic closed guard, so I mean, Aaron's like substantially smaller than me, right? But let's say I just get a good closed guard, Aaron just wraps around the upper body, right? And be like, hey, pick me up and slam me on my back. Come on, buddy. I think you could, yeah, go ahead. No, just sit down, just sit down on your knees. Right? So the guy just sits back, Pulls me up, but, but yeah, this is that pulls me up, boom, right? <laughs> but, so it's like a legitimate problem, right? That the guy can do, um, you know, things like that, right? Or sit here, do this. I bet you could now. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> boom, right? And that's a very normal thing, especially for dudes who don't really know what they're doing, right? You see this in MMA fights and stuff like that, you know, like with, with newer guys, especially. It's like, he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he gets a good grip, he just picks me up and like hits me into the ground, right? So, I have my controls here. So if you're a longer guy, like Jared and Jeff, this is probably a good option for you guys. For me, I can never really like get my guard up super high, but if I'm able to walk and get my guard up really high, more around his upper body, now my weight is obviously further up his body, so he has you know much more trouble like getting leverage to pick me up. Or what I do when I get to here and here is I go hip escape and I put a foot in his hip. Right? So now I create so his center of gravity is his hips, like his pelvis, right? My center of gravity is my hips, my pelvis. Now it's very far away. So now he's not gonna have the leverage to be able to pick me up, okay? So I sit here and here, I can still be in the head controls I was in, right? Or let's say I got to it with head and arm control, I can go boom, boom, right? Make that space there, right? Same thing, okay? So I put the foot in the hip, drive my hips back a little bit, make a little bit of space, right? That way he can't pick me up, can't slam me, right? Because that's legitimate danger, right? So I'm with Aaron here. Aaron gets me in closed guard. I'm like, oh, boom, boom, don't really know what I'm doing. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, you fuck, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, right? So, so he keeps me down, puts a foot in my hip, right? Go ahead, boom, huh? foot in my hip, yeah. So now, now I try to pick him up, very difficult, right? Now, go to get a good like overhook and, uh, and head control, right? So, boom, foot in the hip. And I still got like a little bit of control, but he can keep me more stretched out and keep my center of gravity off of his center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, guys? So what I want you guys to do is I want you to work to head and arm or overhook. Then I want you to break, put that foot on the hip 
or climb the guard up high, okay? We're gonna make a little space. Then I want you to add, trying to access tools from there, right? So I get to here and here, I'm like, boom. Okay, here and here, right? So now I get to this position. Maybe now I can start to access tools or hit him in the face, right? Things like that, right? Boom, boom. Oh, you don't like that no more? Cool. Right, come up here, come up here ready to fight. Whatever that is, that makes sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So play with the position, you know, nice and slow, nice and, I almost said nice and slow, nice and smooth. Joel, rewind the video, <laughs> and I want to make sure it doesn't sound like I said slow and smooth. Um, <laughs> you said, yeah, you said slow is fast or something. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so play with getting the foot in the hip and extending, and then maybe we go to the tools, maybe I give him a couple shots in the face, maybe I get that knee and foot back inside, push him, make a little bit of space, now I can choose tools or stand up. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, let's lane. 75% power on our face drags? <laughs> uh, no, no, lane. 72 yeah. at most. Lane, so like, what is there like for speed? Because obviously if you go full, you go like bang, like you just go full power, full speed. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna get, you're gonna end up hurting each other. But if you go too slow, I don't know. Like what's this, what should the speed be in like if you're actually practicing this? Um, is it like I half mean, speed? So a lot of it's dependent on two partners. Like Aaron and I have trained together like a decent amount, right? So like, so he's he's a good training partner. Like he's not the kind who's going too hard trying to hurt me or anything. So I just be like, hey, let's just flow this a little bit, right? Boom. I think Aaron drew first. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> um, I'm deep but class. no, like, like that was that was perfect. And like, and as you can see there, that like, we did a lot more, yeah, like grappling than we're doing here because I, we we have more experience, you know. But um, that's a perfectly reasonable speed. And the only reason I'm out of breath is because I'm trying to talk while doing sure. it all. Sure, yeah. And uh, I might be fat too. But uh, <laughs> all right, any questions on that, guys? Well, sure. Okay, let's rock. And again, you know, just play with it. It's kind of a little bit of. Like a free spar with direction. <laughs> so, Cody, make sure you have strong arm controls when you're trying to either walk the guard up. Yeah. And it's like, it's okay. So, hey, hey, guys, let's add this. I was, I was going to kind of do this next, but guy on top, give him some very light, like 10%, like open hand, like kind of strike looks, just so he like sees what his adversary is, right? Like his enemy here is one getting slammed on the ground and getting hit with hands. So just, and I, I mean, like literally just, you know, just, just, just make him aware of the thing, you know, that maybe that gives him a little bit better feedback on making sure he controls the hands and arms on that. And so, yeah, we gotta keep it before we actually go speed up. Yeah, kind of work on that, that I just have to put that, get that foot in there on my head and kind of create that space, just kind of, you know, work with the position. Yep, and so, good, and try to move your butt out to the side. Oh, okay. when you're yeah, so when you're trying to find a way to get that foot in, no, move your butt out to the side, yeah. Yep. We call that a hip escape. Yep. Super fundamental jiu jitsu thing. You know, once you have that, exactly that. Yeah, because now you make space, now you can bring that knee back and put the foot in and make space. Otherwise, it's very difficult. If you just move away from the guy, he just moves his knees and follows you, right? So you need to change the angle of like, escaping, and then you can bring that foot on the I'm a lowly white belt, but my flexibility is definitely not there. So if we get I definitely here. don't see that when I see you, Jeff. <laughs> Try you two and try it here. Yeah. Uh, hip here. escape, good, yep, yeah. yep, yeah. good, Jared. Yeah. Get the hip there, and then clear a little space. Yeah. So then, yeah, now kick it. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then he Jesus. needs to sneak out to me on the ground. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's exactly what I would do. So, like, if the guy is on his knees, like in your guard with that, when you make space, I would, do, I would start kicking him in the freaking right. face right there. Because He's training his ability to control you. So he's coming down so he can get better arm related controls on you, but he's training his mobility, right? So as soon as you so as soon as you got here and here, boom, throw that go ahead. Yep, I'll give him a little bit of Once you get here now, boom, boom, yeah. Oh shit, what the fuck? Yeah. Perfect, that's perfectly legit. That's all you wanted, right? Yeah, boom. Okay. 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 Okay.
this year? You might just go for it. What's that? You just push that foot down. Oh, like a 10 foot down. No, not like a 10 foot down. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I feel like mine does. Because I was trying to, like, get my little Mike so he takes his face away now. And it's so perfectly legit. Yep. Like, and that's, and that's you know, again, that part of the continuum. It's like, like a guy can't have all of the control and striking. And he can't do all of the striking and have all of the control. So that's why, like, so much of, like, you know, MMA and grappling and stuff like that is, like, he's always trying to use feet and legs to trap one arm and then maybe control the other one. But a lot of it's, like, so let's say Jeff's down here. Right, so like, so just the uh, MMA stuff before. So like, like really common like strike stuff is basically try to trap with the opposite hand, land one strike. But then he gets the hand back, so it's like constantly like back, you know. So it's constantly like you're just trapping and like trying to go for like. It's unlikely that I'm gonna go like, oh hey, somehow hold both of these and just and just sit here and like rock his world like continually. So it's like boom, boom. So it's like hey, I managed to trap whack one, and you're just kind of doing that like a whole bunch of times. You know, like sort of singularly, sure. because he cannot do all of the things. But then you, as the bottom guy, that's also your window. Is because he can't do all of the things. Whichever one he's given you, make him pay a little bit with that, so he moves and then gives you a chance to do sure. stuff. Makes sense. Evelyn is one of those.